Well, hello, and welcome to Opal City Confidential, a Starman podcast, episode 38, Sand and Stars, part one, where we'll be covering Starman, volume two, issue 20, and World's Fair Comics number one. Yes, World's Fair Comics number one, the first published Sandman story by Larry Dean. And I can't wait to talk about that, but we're going to start with Starman, volume two. 20 volume 2 issue 20 uh which was released on the 1st of may 1996 uh and cover dated july 1996 it has an amazing amazing tony harris cover uh jack's in the foreground and the background is wesley dot all in red and it says sand and stars part one um this uh, editor, Mike Carlin. I was bad-mouthing him. I am recording this after me and David record next week's episode, which is about Mystery Comics... Mystery Comics? <laughs> Sandman... Mis- mis- Sandman Mystery Theater, issues 30, 31, 32, 33, um, which has... Uh, it's a wonderful Sandman story where he meets Ted for the first time, and it was a wonderful conversation. We had finished it earlier, and now I'm recording this episode. Uh, but we... Um, I might have said something bad about Mike Carlin at some point, uh, and I, uh, I'm i not going to take it back. Uh, Tony Harris is the um, uh, cover artist, as it is. Um, written by James Robinson, pencils by Tony Harris, inks by Wayne Von Grabaja, uh, Gregory Wright, Bill uh, as colorist, letterer Bill Oakley, and NJQ, editors Archie Goodwin and Chuck Kim. Um, again, s- uh, title Sand and Stars Part 1, the wonderful, uh, to the point, Synopsis on the DC Wicca is when Jack Knight visits the elderly Wesley Dodds at a nursing home facility, another resident is murdered by a masked man. Jack chases the killer to the rooftop and Wesley, wearing his salmon mask, intervenes to save his ally. Not wanting to battle the two heroes, the mysterious murderer makes his getaway. Feature characters, uh, Starman Jack Knight, Sandman Wesley Dodds, supporting cast Ted Knight and Diane Belmont. Wesley's beautiful wife, antagonist, The Face. I don't know this. I'm going to go and read some, do some homework before we get to issue two. Um, and I got an announcement as we continue uh, through this four-part story. Um, uh, it takes place in New York City, Dodd's Tower, a luxury building for the elderly, and Vincenzo's Alder, Aldo Savages. Some notes reprinted in Starman, A Wicked Inclination, and Starman Omnibus Volume 2, both in the hard and the soft cover, but also in the compendium, which is I'm reading, I am selling my um, omnibus. Um, just make space, and I need some cash. And I've got the lovely compendiums. The face is an old enemy of the Sandman, and is the one who is fighting, the one who is fighting Jack on the rooftop. The Elder Miss Adventure of Wesley Speaks can be read in Sandman Mystery Theater 37. Um, oh. Yes, that's the first part. 37, 38, 39, and 40. I screwed that up, but we'll leave it as is. So let's get uh, go through this. I'm gonna, I read this in two places. I read it in the compendium, and I read it on the app. Um, when I read in the app, I read it panel by panel, which some issues it really works with, and other issues it's distracting is all get out. Um, but it is what it is, so I'm going to pull this up. But let me talk about it. Um, let me talk about Sandman first, or at least Sandman in this era. I, this would have been the only Sandman mystery theater kind of story I read. I may have picked up and thumbed through an issue. I never read it. Uh, I got the first two volumes in collected edition two years ago, and I read the first eight issues and then stopped. Then the compendium I got came out, and I got I sold the trades and got the compendium, and hopefully a second one will finish it. And I read the first three arcs, and I've loved everything, but I've gotten distracted. And now I read the 37 through 40 for next week's episode. Uh, I have to go back and read it. But this was my only kind of inkling of how uh, Wesley had been refined and how he's a little more a more fleshed-out character. And I'm going to leave it that discussion to something me and David, will you'll hear me and David talk about. But it was great. But now I kind of have a different take on this. So um, it was neat reading it. And I really am fighting reading ahead. Um, I find it 
uh, difficult at times. Like, I want to read the next three issues of this. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to read some Sandman Mystery Theater. But I do, I can just, you know, we're just hitting a groove right here. And this story is so good. I had forgotten how good it is. And it, what it leads into next is just crazy. It's just crazy. That's what gets better and better. So let's get through to my take on it. On the cover, amazing. Uh, I posted it already. Uh, it's lovely. It's a, uh, Tony Harris is just amazing. Uh, gush, gush, gush. I'm just going to do that the whole time. Uh, it starts with a very, it's a green uh, tinted. It's a green a page. It's green inks. And green and black and shades of green. And it shows a black circle. Then you see that that is a close-up of Nash's, of uh, the new Miss sunglasses it pulls out. She turns into him. He splits out of her. They end up dancing. And then they're dancing in this black void. And that blow void is inside one of the um, eyepieces of Sandman's goggles on his gas mask. And Jack wakes up. And he dry, immediately drives to dad. The second page is Jack in bed. Then the skyline. Then him in his old army truck lining up. Uh, driving up to his dad's place. Dad, Jack, they say. And then... Ted said, it's not Ted, Jack says, I knew you weren't expecting me until the weekend, but something's come up. Ted, a new threat, a dream, it shook me up. A missed crime wave, la the last one. His dad goes, yeah, the dad, the, the, that bad day, yes, that's what it's about. She spoke of her father losing a keepsake. So they're having this conversation, and, it, and Ted goes, you need to reach out to Wesley. Because, you know, he says... Um, you didn't see a medal on the, like, let me just give this conversation because it's important. You didn't see the medal on the first adventure with the mist. Are you, are you sure of that? Quite certain. However, yeah, it's true that there was, all right, Ted say, it's true that that was my first exploit with the mist, but it wasn't the first time the mist broke the law, nor for that matter, the first time he battled a costume crime fighter. The mist made Opal his prowling ground, but his first appeared in New York, while earlier in his, uh, his methods were a little different, but it was still him. You never, you never told me that before. You never asked me before. Anyway, the hero he fought was the Sandman, Wesley Dodd, indeed. Yes, it was Jack. How did you know? And they probably, at this point, Jack tells him about the dream, and then it cuts away, and Jack is talking about the difference between New York and... And Opal, and we're getting lovely images of New York going up from the high rises over Central Park down to one of the streets to some junkyard in a, some corner in one of the boroughs. Uh, where two guys in masks with two dogs are chasing a dude. And he's going, I told you everything. Uh, you said you let me go. We let you, and this is the line. And we did. We let you go. You ran. We chased. We caught. But you have the codes, the operation overrides, all of them. I did everything you wanted. Now, we let you live. Croft? Huh? How can we dare let you live? And they let the dogs loose. It's just mess up. Then we cut back to Jack, and he's narrating. He can't believe he's here. He's going to meet one of his heroes in this great suit. Um, it's a green suit with a big, probably a painted yellow, a green tie with painted yellow stars. He's got a big, like, portfolio tube, which is carrying his, uh, cosmic rod. Uh, he gets in the building, and you find out it's a building that, um, uh, Wesley has built. Um, and he open and he gets a door, and he's thinking, Oh my God, my hero is standing before me. And the next page, Diane Belmont. Yes, Jack's. Hero is not Wesley. It's Diane Belmont, Wesley's wife and partner of 60 years and, pro and a Nobel Prize winning writer, which is kind of cool that they flesh out her later life like that. And it's, they're in this luxury apartment and she's, they have a little conversation. Jack uh, kind of goes, Ugh! gets all tongue-tied when he meets her. But she takes him to where Wesley's watching the sunset from his, his study and it's beautifully drawn. It's all done in reds. And he sees Wesley, and he sees Wesley, and he's thinking, but I don't see him as small, no. I see the man who did it first, the man driven enough to begin at all. I see a giant. Didn't matter to me. 
died in his first in his past. Then a wave of emotion. I can't I can't begin to understand. It suddenly means everything. Being here with Diane Belmont, in my opinion, American's greatest living writer. And Dodds, the pioneer of my own brotherhood of favorite fools. Being here with them both. And at that moment I will never sell it's a moment I will never sell or barter. It make it will make me smile to recall in my darkest hours, and it will stay with me forever. Um, my cats are running crazy behind me. Um, it made me jump. Um, and then they have a conversation about the mist and about your father never comes and sees me, and you find and you find out that Ted doesn't come because Ted turned their last adventure when they were de-aged, and then. Uh, didn't die. Wesley was aged older than everybody else. So Ted feels guilty about that. And Wesley thinks it's stupid. That's ridiculous. Me old and him not? Your father's always did fret over the silliest things. He's guilty for being younger than me. It's a quality, not a, it's a quality, it's quality, not quantity that matters. And they continue to have a conversation and it's like we get two different sides to their history where Jack doesn't think that, um, I mean, Ted didn't think that Wesley thought of him. And you find out that Wesley had a lot to admire. He really, he thought a lot of Ted. And he, they just see their past differently. Then we hear a scream. They run out and the nurse is in the hall running out of another apartment. Um, she's going inside. He's dead. What? Mr. Blaine's been murdered. There, the killer, and Jack just pulls the cosmic rod out of the the poster tube and flies after him, has a quick battle on the roof, and then Wesley shows up with his gas mask on, his sand gun, using his cane, he comes up, he rescues Jack, and the bad guy gets away. So, it's really mostly about the introduction of Jack to Ted. I mean, yeah, Jack to, Jack to Wesley, and... A little bit about Wesley and Ted's relationship that is fleshed out later in Sam and Mystery Theater because uh, this is well, well, yeah, this had been out. This had been out. This uh, that would have already been out. So it's, it's uh, Wagner's moving in continuity. He has fleshed out Sandman. So Sandman's a very different character than he ever was when I was reading him. And it's just so good. And it's just Jack, this layer of Jack, that he's such a nerd. That, and his hero isn't, isn't another hero. It's a, it's a writer whose writing, you know, moves him. He talks about when she won the Nobel Prize, he went out and had a good, happy drunk. Because he was so happy. All he, he just wanted to celebrate. And he had his own little celebration because of Diane's success. A strange, he was so happy for a stranger. And she comments on that. And it is a very sweet moment. And we got these great looking villains that I've told you a little bit about because I shouldn't have read those notes. But it's called The Face. I don't know much about them. I've seen some notes in here and I'm going to go read some other comics. Which I'll, I will discuss at the end of the episode. But again, it's a great first chapter. It's a lot of setup. It's a lot of dialogue. But it's also building atmosphere. It's shifting from comfortable Opal City to a new environment because Jack isn't um, Jack, is all, Jack is always a bit of a fish out of water when he's anywhere other than Opal City which I love um, and we get to see another Jay there and this is a really great story folks I'd forgotten about it hadn't read it in a while when I read this one the other day or a couple days ago when I read it the first time because um, I, I read it three times in the last four days or something like that that I forgot how good this was. I remember just enough to be excited and not enough to have the next issue spoiled for me so there'll be something new about it when I, I dive into it. So I'm excited about it. All right, so our next, okay, World's Fair Comics number one. Yes, yes, yes. Let me give you some of the little bit of uh, information. This was so... First one on sale, April 30th, 1939. Um, World's Fair's Comics number one. It was 15 cents. Um, it has a great cover. Uh, 
showing the 1939 World's Fair with some of the characters, Sandman and uh, Zatar on the cover. It has been reprinted. Ooh, it's been reprinted a few times in Flashback, Don Epps, 1973, Superman World's Finest Comic Archives, number one. Oh, that's cool. It's probably the first Armor Case because this is the predecessor to World's Finest. Golden Age Sandman Archives 1, the same in story is. DC Comics Rarities um, Archives, uh, number 1, 2005. Superman the Golden Age Omnibus, 2013, number 1. Gold, Superman the Golden Age um, Series number 9, 2006. I think that is the paper trade back of that. So it has Starman. It has stuff about the fair. It has other characters. Slam Bradley's in it. Zatara. And a few I don't know. But we're not going to talk about them. We are here to talk about Sandman. And so this Sandman is written by Gardner Fox as Larry Dean. Oh, I'm an idiot. I didn't know that when I read Larry Dean's name. See, I don't know. My Sandman history is terrible. Yell at me. Okay, it's penciled um, by a guy named Bert Christman. Inks by Bert Christman. Uh, first line of dialogue is a high executive, the Dodds Bessing Steel Corporation. That would be Wesley. It is a superhero comic. The main character is a Sandman, Wesley Dodd. Uh, George Henry, Secret Service agent. Mr. Everett's villain, president of uh, Dodds Blessing Steel Corporation, Bor- Boris Leland. Um, again, this has been reprinted three times. Flashback, Dinah Pubs Enterprises, 1973, number 12. Golden Age Salmon Archives number one and DC Rarities uh, Archives number one. Um, it's a beautiful. Um, Mr. Christman uh, is does a wonderful job. It is what I like to say. It is new pay, newspaper quality. Back in the '30s, the better comic artists I think were on the dailies on the newspaper strips, and this one looks like it could been. An everyday newspaper strip with Adventures of Sandman. It is so beautifully drawn. And it is so laid out. I have, I've shared four pages. I'm not going to really share more than that. Because I want you all to kind of search it out. There are way it is in public domain. It looks like it is everywhere on the interweb. Uh, but it is in those books. If you can find it, um, get it. I found it on a public domain site. Uh and I enjoyed it. It's hard to read them on those because I'm old and I'm reading them on my phone and uh, it makes it a little difficult. Like right now I'm scrolling because it is in the back of this comic. It's a huge comic. This must be, um, must have been a treasure, a treasured possession of some kid. I mean, the ones that exist, probably someone who got it when they went to the World's Fair and then passed it down to their kids and their grandkids. But the first page um, has a panel that goes along across the title. It's a title panel and it says The Sandman. And there he is standing in a purple fedora, a blue and yellow gas mask, yellow gloves, a purple cape, or yeah, purplish cape, and a red suit with an orange um, decorative handcap. And it says, Sandman, weird figure of the night, garbed in mask and cloak, his guns bring sleep, his deeds justice in a world of injustice. Uh, he is wanted by the police forces of two continents, yet he has never committed a crime. A modern Robin Hood, a friend of the afflicted. And it starts with Wesley going, hey, wait a minute, why are these really important plans being put out in the public? Uh, he doesn't understand why the president of his company is doing that. It's snaky. It's weird that he's bringing these top secret plans out into an open room when they didn't need him. So he, they're in the meeting room with some Secret Service agents. He, Wesley gently knocks one of the pages, the most important page, onto the floor and kicks it under the table. He's handing it back to the Secret Service agent. The lights go out and come back on, and the briefcase is gone. Wesley, being suspicious of Everts, his um, boss, uh, not his boss, the president of the company he owns, he goes home and changes into a Sandman costume, rifles through some files and finds out what he's looking for. And then he wakes up the Secret Service. So he, he, uh, he runs into the Secret Service agent who has been bound and gagged um, by the bad guys. He tells him what's going on. Sammy goes away. Then he gets into, uh, he pulls up away from the shot where the bad guys are and he keeps his gas mask on. It turns into some scuba gear. And this is a great sequence. It is like high, like Alex Raymond, Hal Foster, Milton Caniff, Will Eisner, newspaper strip adventure. It is glorious. Um, 
and it's so beautiful. And he goes on the boat. He overhears where the bad guys are doing. He captures them all, gasses them, finds out that his pre- uh, Eckhart to Evert is the bad guy. Everett gets away, but he is finally captured. And then Sandman mails himself, as was he dodged the, um, uh, the evidence against him, and he calls the Secret Service agent and lets him know. So it's just a real simple, it's a simple action thing. Bad guy selling secrets, it's near the war. There's a lot about spies and comics and stuff. I gotta say, it's one of the prettiest Golden Age comics I've ever read. I really kind of, I kind of went and looked on eBay and said how uh, expensive the Sandman archive, and it's too expensive. But it's stuff I'd like to read. Um, I wish it was on. I, will, I wish it was on the app. Maybe there are a few of them. I will try to look. But it really beautiful, lovely comic. Had a good introduction to that character, and it's making me want to go grab. And I probably will the same Mystery Theater book off the shelf. Um, because it's so good. This is I'm so excited for you guys. If you're reading along uh, or you've read it before, go revisit it. I'm going to re- read some of it, and I'm going to read Sam and Mr. Theory tonight when I'm done uh, editing this and posting it. All right, folks. Um, again, uh, drops will be sporadic. Uh, I've gone through a lot at work. I had a, took a mental health day, and i got to talk to Dave about Sandman and Starman and comic books and life and politics. Had a great time. Really helped my brain. And this uh, made me able to do this episode relatively quickly after dinner while my wife's helping, my wife's helping some neighbors change light bulbs. So, folks, as always, be safe, be smart, be kind, please be kind, and read some comics. Yeah.